Right, so this is going to be a bit of a tutorial on how to skirting board a room. So, just pulled the floor coverings back, so we've got a bit of a gap around the outside of the room and we're nice and clear to work away. I've already done the architraves and got a skirting block on there that the skirting's going to butt up into. So the detail on that, the skirting block just sits pretty much flush about one mil back from the door lining or the inside of the door lining where the door sits. Uh, your architrave sits down onto that and your skirting board finishes with a nice 90 degree joint into that skirting block. So before we start we just want to go around the room where the skirtings go in. We've got six inch skirting on these rooms and we're just going to check make sure there's no bulges. Quite often you'll get like a lip of plaster work left on there so we're just going to go around and scrape that off so we're as flush as possible for the skirting board to sit back as nicely as it can onto the plaster. Right, so next we need to decide how we're going to approach the skirting and which bits we're going to scribe first and cut in first. So we're going from this skirting block here, round corner, to this corner here. Now this corner here is pretty awkward because you can't cut the other end with a scribe and then stick this end in because of this detail on the door so the, the skirting board can't be slotted in in that sort of angle there. So we've got to start by pushing a piece of skirting into this corner as a square end and then work our other way around the room. So in this scenario, I would start in this corner here but with a square cut on the end of the board and run a piece along all the way to here with another square cut. And then my first scribe is going to be on this piece on the left hand end. Then that can run all the way in and then sit in this corner here. We should just be able to get it in around that pipe and then the last piece is going to be scribed on this left hand end and then slotted in and then cut so it sits onto this skirting block here. Right, so let's take a length of this first piece of skirting. So we're going to measure the longest point here. So just want to, you can use a bit of skirting for this. We'll just measure a poppy floor roughly where the top of the skirting is going to go and that's going to be your measurement point and then we're going to use this laser pen to take a measurement all the way to the other end so a little red dot gives you a position of where it's measuring to and then you just ping it and gives you a measurement there on the screen alternative way is to get someone to hold the tape and measure it into the corner but uh, it's not quite as accurate as using a uh, straight line laser pen because it gives you that perfect measurement but we generally tend to go at where the top of the skirting is going to sit so three six eight five and i knock one millimeter off just to give you a tiny bit of wiggle room and then you might have to scrape a bit more plaster out the corner because generally as the hawks come down it's slightly bigger at the base than where the top of the skirting is So we're a tiny bit tight on that cut, so I just trim a, a little bit more off. But what I did do on the saw there was cut it square to my pencil line so that the top was the right length. But then I've cut away about three degrees for the rest of the cut. So from about here down, I've cut a, like an undercut of three degrees. So the top is the only bit that touches the plaster, the rest of it's cut away. Right, so now that's in place, I just dropped the skirting board out of the way for a second it's a little bit awkward with this door on the end and just have a look underneath you can usually tell if we've got any cables or pipes and we can mark them so that we don't drill in them locations anywhere from onto a screw I'm just going to have a tape now if you want to truly fix 
timber skirts into properly, you're going to need two fixings. So I'm going to put one at about 40 mil off the floor, and then one at about 110 if the moulding will allow me. So I get one in the lower, bit below the plaster line, and one where the plaster line is. Right, in the corner, you can hide your fixings, so you don't need to fill them where the other piece of skirting will sort of come in, so if you do it tight on them. Right, need to fill them ones. Right, so I'm using these little 80mm concrete screws. So I just put a bit of tape on the drill bit. So 80mm, I'll keep the tape about 30mm away from that at the end of the drill. And that way I know I've got the depth, if I get near to this tape, I don't have to go right up to the piece of wood because then the tape is going to start peeling back and you're going to get deeper and deeper as you go. So. As long as I'm near to the wood with the tape, I've got enough depth with the drill hole. Make sure that the sealant's touching. There's foam and glue all over the back of that. Right, so for the next bit, again we've got a cut to piece, cut to length piece, but with the scribe on this left end. I'm just going to measure the overall length of the wall, which is 3949, and then I had a measurement earlier of 3951. So 3950 I'll cut it off at, and I'll cut a 45 degree scribe cut on this left hand end. Cut it off at 90, it's going to be a bit longer because the length isn't a problem here. Do you want to make sure everything's dead tight when you do this cut? So the skirting is lovely and flush against that back bend, so you get a square cut in this direction, and it's nice and tight down to the bed. So you get a, a lovely cut in either direction. Now, ideally, you want to be cutting so that the teeth of the blade exit into the bottom of the timber. So again, you might get a burr cut on the top of this. So we could turn it upside down, like that, and cut in at 45 in this direction, like this. So we should get a nice clean exit cut. Right, so now we've got this scribe line. That 45 degree cut has given us a line here to follow with our scribe cut. When we're trying to cut a matching scribe so that it sits over the other piece of skirting. So this, in a perfect world, should be a 90 degree line. We've set our skirting nice and square on the wall, so it's helped us in that way. 
and this isn't got too much of a cup on this skirting. If the skirting was got quite a cup grain or it's bent in the sun or whatever, then this, this line here probably won't be perfectly square on your scribe. But you're not going to tell that until you put the two together. So for a start, we'll just do a nice square cut. I'll bevel the saw over to about five, seven degrees just to give me a bit of a, an undercut on the blade so the bit that touches the skirt in and the bit that you see is the tightest point. So just cut that down and we stop at this point here on that square line. Anything being cut in this direction wants to be undercut the same as we've done the undercut with the circular saw. So to start by taking this section out here So we've got all of this material here to guide our cut in before we actually start making the scribe cut along this line. So it's, you can use it like a, a bit of a guide in and alignment tool. Hard to cut this and film at the same time. All right, on this top section, we go into a feather edge. So in order to cut that really nice and sharp, we can do a little incision with the chisel. So just, just where the edge of that bevel stops, you can just cut down at 90 degrees, and then chisel a bit away, like so. Hopefully you can pick that up. Just a little notch, and that gives us room to be able to start the saw cut off. So to get the exact length, I'm measuring from the flat bit of the skirting board right into the corner at the appropriate height on the other side of the skirting, 3922. So I'll cut that off at 3923. So I've cut that very slightly long, so it gives us a bit of pressure and a bit of a room for adjustment on the scribe. Tension that the other end with the extra length of the board. And then we can make any adjustments we need to to the scribe. It's not too bad that. There's a couple of high spots. So anywhere it's touching is a high spot. And anywhere there's a gap, you don't want to take any off. So that scribe wasn't too bad. And with a tiny bit of sealant, as you push the joint together would have been absolutely perfect but for the purposes of how to make an alteration we'll just take a bit off of it so we want to follow this line up here because it's touching at the top and not the bottom of this flat and then we want a little bit off of these points here and the inside of this tiny nib because we've got a back cut on this here from the saw it's slight under cut we can just file the very face off and 
And then this nib, I've got a tiny little radius file. I can just take a bit out of this. Get really gentle on this feather edge. And that wants gluing when it goes together so that it glues on top of the other piece. We should be about right at that. There we go, got a pretty good scribe joint there. So it's the same process for fixing, mark any points where there might be a hazard and then put your fixings top and bottom of the skirting. The undercut on this end, so I, I cut the skirting square and then take that slight undercut on and in a scenario like this where you've got to put a scribe into somewhere where you can't just push the board straight in because of this pipe it helps you drop the board in down vertically because you cut that timber away and you still get a nice tight joint at the top Right, same process here, scribe on the left, cut on the right. Right, so the reason I'm using concrete fixings and two of is because you can control the tilt of the skirting. So if I look at that and how it wants to sit naturally, it's obviously high, there's a high spot in the plaster at the bottom, so I've got to tilt that skirting so it sits level against that board. So the bottom is the high point, so I'm going to put that fixing in first. Then I can use the second fixing to hold the squareness, so that can still move slightly with one fixing. I'm just going to pull it slightly away, so the, the top slightly away, and then the fixing will pull that back. But because the screw is winding into both the wooden skirting and the wall. It holds the two, it locks the two together. So. You got a solid bit of skirting. The same principle on this bit here. So, looking for where it's going to sit, yeah, it's slightly top high, so I'm just going to pull the, the bottom out a touch as I fix the top. Use the 
fixings will pull. If you go a bit beyond tight, they do pull the skirting slightly. So if I do that up a bit more, it should pull it back nice and square. Then you've got to remember on the architrave block bits, you got a nice even threshold against them two parts there. So that, that sort of gap along the edge is even all the way down. Right then, as a bit of a brucey bonus for you if you've got this far in the video, this is a bit of kit that I've kept a bit to myself, uh, not told anyone about. I've been using it for the last probably 18 months and it is an absolute diamond bit of kit if you are doing any form of scribing or fine fitting of any, any components, wooden, stone or anything like that. This bit of kit really, really just seals the deal in getting that sort of perfect finish and cut on any scribe. So where it really came into its own for me was when I was trying to fit some high gloss panels to a exposed brickwork wall. So scribing into all the little nooks and crannies of the brick, but the, the high gloss panels were actually painted. So the, the paint was really hard, but really brittle. So if you touched it with anything like a, a jigsaw or anything like that, it just chipped the paint off the edge and exposed the primer underneath. So there's really nothing you could do to scribe it very easily into all them little pieces. And this, this tool just absolutely blitzed it so easy. Um, it's great because you can turn the speed right down so there's the speed controllable. If you put it on speed one, really, really slow, really controlled, you can take a really small amount off. You can put a finer belt on and just go really slowly and get that perfect cut. So on your small, really delicate pieces of, like on the top of this skirting, you can take the tiniest amount off, really controlled. But I'm just gonna show you a, a little glimpse of it in action as I scribe this off. I've not cut along here like I normally would on a circular saw. I'm just gonna do the whole thing with the sander and show you sort of what speeds it can do. I've not got the, a very coarse belt in here. I think that's a 100 or 120 grit belt that I've got in here. So you can go coarser if you want, if you want a quicker scribe, but uh, I'm just gonna show you how it works and how good it is. I've made this little holder that wraps around. It just screws on in one place here. I just made it wrap around because all this is exposed and it's quite dusty. So I just made that and now it's actually quite, it worked doubly as well because you can hold it around that part of the sander. So you hold the bit that I've enclosed the belt round and you can put the dust extraction on there and it pretty much, you can work dust free with it as well. As long as you're using the side of the belt that goes into that hole and not the push side. Right, so that was the whole scribe cut using the sander. So what you're doing in normal practice is jigsaw along near to the line and then scribe it out with the sander. I was just showing that in case you've got some thicker timber to scribe to see how quick it would work. But without touching it with any sort of hand tools, I could see that it was gonna be tight on this top nib. It's not quite got into that really tight circle but it's pretty good considering I've not touched it with any tools yet. So let's just take that bit off. That was a bit slow as well because the camera is right where my face wants to be looking at the, the cut. I can't actually see what I was doing. Mm. 
Amazing Madonna. Madonna. I will just try that before I make any adjustments because you never know, that might be perfect. If I adjust it to be perfect on the sample piece and it's wrong on the actual skirt and I'm scribing into, I'll be a bit annoyed. Right, so you can see it's actually pretty good. It wasn't bad at all. This, this top section is perfect. So it just needs a tiny bit off of the flat section here. Now, traditionally, you would do like I did in the video showing you how to do it with hand tools just try and file this bit away but uh, the sort of power file makes really light work of it so following a line like that on a scribe is great someone borrowed it recently off me to do some parquet flooring like scribing around uh, like bull nose steps on a staircase and uh, they absolutely loved it they, they didn't want to give it back when I'd uh, when I asked for it back so uh, it's a really really good tool if you've not got one or using one at the minute, then I'd, I'd recommend getting a, a cheaper model if nothing else. Right, so there we have it. The skirting is finished in this room. So, a few things to look out for when you're doing this. Try to, you can either keep a straight edge while you're working and just push it along the front of the skirting or work to a laser line um, if you want to keep a perfectly square and straight piece of skirting board so if you're having something like a tiled floor or the floor's already tiled you want to make sure that skirting board sits absolutely dead true to the tiles where you can so if there's like a, a very slight bow in the wall or a hollow then sometimes best not to follow that and better to follow what's on the floor and keep everything nice and straight that way and then you don't see the hollow so much if it's corked to the top of the skirting. The other thing is levels so if you just sit the skirting board on the floor and work around like that if the floor's drastically out of level then you can end up with some quite angled pieces of skirting in places so it's sometimes worth sticking a level, laser level down in the middle of the room and just checking checking the levels and perhaps planing the skirting in so that it's level on top if it's not too far out of level around the room. So it's just one to, to play by ear really. I, I quite like to level the skirting so it's perfect all the way around but on a room where it might be one maybe two inches out of level across the room it just looks a bit ridiculous if you if your skirting board's perfectly level but your floor's not then uh, you know you don't want a three inch piece of skirt in one side of the room and a five inch on the other another thing is to try and work with your your long lengths first so you'll always do so I, I did this length along here as part of my first run and didn't start over there in that corner because that's quite a short piece so if I'd have happened to naff this bit up so it didn't work and you know I cut it a bit short or something then I'll have another piece of skirting still to cut that one again and I can cut the other pieces from that longer bit so try and start with the longest piece as possible and I think that's about it so this is pretty much a tutorial on how to do the internal corners of skirting board. If you've got external corners they will need mitering so there's no way you can do any other joint but mitre an external corner so if you do have to do an external corner I try to put like a peg in it like a domino joint so a couple of dominoes in the back of the skirting board to hold the joint nice and strong where you can or at least get some fixings in and through the joint otherwise with solid timber they tend to open up they crack and shrink a little bit and it, it opens up on them external mitres so really important to get something in there to try and hold it together perhaps the next time I come across some external mitres I'll do a bit of a tutorial on them as well but hope you've enjoyed this one hope you found it useful like subscribe and leave a comment if you feel you need to